Good evening everybody, it's David Schlothauer here, keeping an eye on your weather forecast as we have big weather pattern changes coming that favor more significant winter storms for the Midwest and the Great Lakes, including for the Northeast, while drier and calmer weather could be returning across the West. Now, if you are new to the YouTube channel and you really like these videos, please consider subscribing, hitting the like button, and sharing this video with your family and friends on social media. So here's a look at the latest European model for Thursday morning, January the 12th, 2023, and we can see what it's painting a picture of. We're likely to see quite a bit of rainfall over the Ozarks, over the upper Midwest, extending into the deep south, such as Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama, for your Thursday morning commute. So if you're going out early, going to work, pl please prepare for ponding on roadways, maybe some urban flooding minorly, because what we're going to see out of that system, quite a bit of moisture associated with it. And then, of course, back across the Pacific Northwest, including for California, we got another system that is going to be slamming the region. The continuation of the parade of storms shall continue over this region over the next week or so before things might hopefully dry out. So going forward here by um, Thursday afternoon into Friday, that system over the Midwest will mo be moving eventually into the southeast and the extreme northeast, bringing the threat for snow, high winds, cooler temperatures, and of course, some rainfall and some thunderstorms if you're in northern Florida, if you are in Georgia, if you are in Al Alabama, the Carolinas, if you are in Tennessee, Kentucky, West Virginia, if you're in Virginia, Maryland, Delaware, uh, if you're in Ohio, Indiana, Indiana, Pennsylvania, and uh, much of New York, you're going to be getting quite a bit of rainfall out of this weather system that is going to be sweeping on by. And due to the dynamics, we're going to continue to see quite a bit of rain and very heavy snowfall once the colder air is able to wrap in out of the north. All right. And then, of course, the Pacific Northwest and California will continue to see some unsettled weather, but likely drier on Thursday, including for much of the Rockies and much of the upper uh, Midwest and also for even the High Plains, looking at some drier weather for your Thursday. And that's what we like to hear about, right? It's it's nice to dry out between systems so that's thursday this is going to be friday and again much of the nation is going to be seeing some more quieter weather maybe a little bit of snow flurries here for tennessee for the appalachians including for again the upper midwest but really again nothing too out of the ordinary we're not talking about a mega snowstorm we're only talking about maybe an inch or less of snowfall in some of these areas as that winter storm moves off towards the northeast into portions of Quebec and Ontario, Canada with the little clipper up here to the north near Hudson Bay. But our focus shall continue to be across Oregon, Washington, as well as California. The continuation of the parade of storms isn't letting up anytime soon just yet. In fact, we might see another sequence of big storm systems renewing the flood concern, damaging winds, cooler temperatures, and more heavy Sierra snowfall for the mountains. Speaking of that, we are really far above average. Wait until you see the additional snowfall totals here in a little bit. So that's going to be Friday. This is Saturday. Again, much of the nation looking pretty good. But look at this for um, Saturday. <laughs> Today, it looks pretty stormy for California, even for Southern California, light to moderate rainfall, more moderate to heavy rainfall, strong winds that could blow down trees, power lines. We're seeing more renewed power outage concerns here for the weakened storm system. And then, of course, for the mountains, heavy snow, blizzard, whiteout conditions, and possible mountain travel. That continues also for Oregon and Washington. Washington, not so bad, but further south, boy, it is going to be really gnarly out out there across the west another stormy saturday coming up this weekend in about 80 hours or so that continues all the way into saturday afternoon with the continuation for more showers thunderstorms in our area and then of course another system marches on through now this one is a little more uncertain the european model is still going crazy with this is it going to go into northern california central or southern california right now it looks like the majority of the 
energy is going to be associated with this low that is going to be targeting mainly Southern and Central California for Sunday night into Monday. This is January the 15th through the 16th, even into the 17th, while the portions of the Rockies and the Four Corners will look at more snow flurries throughout the day, Sunday into Monday. And then, of course, up here in Washington and Oregon, another uh, decent storm system might bring in a little more moisture across the area. And then, of course, by the time we go into Monday, there's your storm system there over the Great Lakes. Going to bring in more chances of rain showers, maybe associated severe weather with that system. But it's really going to be focused down here across the four corners with the parade of storms, including for California, that could lead to renewed flood concerns. And then that continues. So by Tuesday and Wednesday, it looks like conditions might dry out a little bit, a little uncertain here as far as what California might be dealing with on Wednesday and Thursday next week. Not this, or not today, Wednesday, or tomorrow, Thursday, but the following week, the 18th, the 19th of January. All right, and then there's your snow for Oregon and Washington. And, of course, a system is going to really develop pretty quickly here over the Deep South and the Midwest. This one has our concern for severe weather again. I'm so sorry I was not able to do the severe weather live streaming before. Or that's because we were without power and if we're without power this weekend again that could really affect on my streaming quality and my YouTube production I cannot help it it's the storms that just don't want to give us electricity it's either we are with electricity for a few days and then we're out of electricity so just keep that in mind really tough here in California with storm after storm after storm wind uh, destructive storms and stuff like that Okay, so that will likely continue through the weekend. And again, renewed power outages could really have a hamper on my live streaming production uh, for next week uh, for this system that could develop. This is, by the way, uh, seven to eight days out, so a lot can change. But you get the idea. Another big storm system, very dynamic. You got the cold sector up here, moderate to heavy snowfall over the Great Lakes. You got a cold front here, and then you got a warm front that is kind of uh, latched onto the surface low all the way across Pennsylvania into New York a very dynamic organized system this is the next system that we will have to monitor for the threat for severe weather wintry weather strong winds and blizzard like conditions out uh, across the central and eastern US and that system moves out with another system maybe by the end of the nine to ten day period all right Really quickly, I wanted to show you all the GFS really quick. I'm not going to go into detail with this because I just uh, mentioned the European in great detail with what each storm is going to look like. So we're just going to kind of go through this fairly quickly. All right, so this is Thursday morning. Again, there's your system over, again, the Midwest. Another one, again, for the Pacific Northwest. That's going to continue again over the next 18 hours. And then that system moves into the northeast, bringing moderate to heavy snowfall. Another system, again, the GFS is pretty aggressive, just like the European model for Saturday system. Strong winds, flood concerns, and heavy snowfall for the mountains. That's going to continue with series of storms into Sunday and Monday on the GFS all the way into Tuesday. And then of course, this system right here over the Great Lakes could bring in another round of severe weather. And then another system on the GFS model versus the European model that had a more drier outcome than the GFS has. And then of course, that same similar system on the GFS for the Great Lakes, for the upper Midwest and for the deep South. That's the system again that we're concerned about for severe weather in the long term. Right now, a lot of uncertainty. Then another storm system for the Four Corners. We'll have to watch that one because that could also bring another threat of severe weather for the Deep South and also for the Southeast, and that moves into the Northeast. So very active weather pattern. It's not necessarily for California now. It looks like that is all transitioning into the, the High Plains, the Midwest, the Great Lakes, and the Northeast, including for the Deep South. Severe weather, winter, uh, heavy snowfall for some, strong winds. You get the ballpark idea, right? The pattern's changing, and when it changes, that could be bad news for other people and good news for us like here in California where we have had too much precipitation and it looks like the pattern doesn't want to change very much at all on the GFS model. But it does get a lot drier all the way across California, which is really nice to see.
So here's a look at the European model as far as snowfall totals go. Again, this is in the next 10 days. Please use this with caution, everybody, when you see maps like this, because uh, each model run is going to be different. The 0Z zero from yesterday had, uh, okay, what what just happened? Okay, there's a 12Z run. Here's the 0Z zero run, and we can see uh, the difference here for the Midwest snowstorm. Really not as much as what the 12Z run that had a lot more snowfall. Actually, when this uh, loads, you'll get the idea. All right, so that's a look at what it shows as far as snowfall totals, and it looks like my internet went out on me, uh, having very big internet problems today because of the strong winds that we're dealing with. So again, you can see the European model uptrended a little bit as far as snowfall totals there, but of course, more so for the extreme northeast, we'll have to watch that closely. And of course, for the mountains of California, we can be looking at an additional 10 plus feet of snowfall within the next five to eight days. Yeah, more snow on the way for the mountains. On top of that, we're looking at more rainfall for the lower elevations, especially for the Pacific Northwest, including for California. We can be looking at another five to 10 inches of rainfall in many areas. That's good news. We are really gonna get ahead of the game here as far as our water year goes with more rain and more moisture expected for the upper Midwest, for the Midwest, and also for the Northeast. We're looking at an additional one and a half to three inches of rainfall in the next 10 days but again please take um just kind of be careful with what model you look at i'm only trying to do my best at making sure i don't overhype stuff because this stuff is not a uh, toy to use as far as um hyping storms up like oh we're gonna get a major winter storm right um, I'm trying to keep that under control. For a lot of you that have followed me for a while, I tend to overhype stuff, but I'm trying to stay on the lower end of the prediction here. Okay, temperatures. Let's take a look at those. It's going to be cold for the desert southwest. For California, we're not going to get warm anytime soon, thanks to the wet weather that we're dealing with, the strong winds. And that brings about cooler temperatures, usually near average to below average uh, daytime highs. But it's going to stay very warm for the Great Lakes, for the Midwest, and the Deep South for the next several days. Not much of a change here in the weather pattern coming up. So these uh, orange and red colors, um, uh, dissate basically, or whatever that word is, delegate to well above average temperatures right and when you get these brighter darker darker red and gray colors that indicates uh, very very warm temperatures uh, warm warmer than average I shouldn't say warm temperatures but above climatological averages for your specific area Okay, so down here for the southeast uh, by the weekend gonna be below average uh, with about 5 to 10 degrees below normal with near normal temperatures for California. Temperatures here 20 to 30 degrees above average uh, for the upper Midwest. Uh, not the upper Midwest, but for the northern plains, for the high plains, and also for southern Canada. Going to be pretty warm and doesn't look like the pattern's going to change anytime soon throughout the middle of next week through the 17th of January. Going to remain well above normal with temperatures during the day and night. Really haven't had much of a winter overall other than that historic Arctic outbreak you all saw on Christmas Eve. That was pretty wild, okay, wasn't it? So that is not coming back anytime soon. You're going to have above average temperatures all the way through the next 10 days, perhaps, probably cooling down a little bit more by the end of the 10 day forecast, as you can see there. But look at this for much of the West, going to cool back down again to below average. In fact, this has been one of the more cooler winters ever recorded across California, the Four Corners, and much of the Intermountain West, just because of the pattern that we've been in for so long with these below average temperatures or what are the normal temperatures, just depending on where you're at with uh, slightly above average temperatures overall in the last 90 days. And we can even see that here on our CDAS temperature um, in the last 30, in the last uh, 90 day period, 
you've had, again, a long-term average of seeing warmer than normal conditions in the Great Lakes in the eastern U.S. with still below average temperatures overall in the last three months across the Intermountain West and also for the Pacific Northwest and the Northern Plains. All right, that's a look at your temperatures now. Let's take a look at your Climate Prediction Center because... Yeah, it really kind of illustrates with what we just showed you on the European model with well above temperatures that are likely uh, for much of the Great Lakes, for much of the Deep South, the Southeast, and the Northeast. These are chances of you seeing your uh, temperature anomalies. So areas like in red and dark red indicate a likelihood chance of seeing above average temperatures, while areas in the lighter blue, the medium blue, are leaning below to likely below average temperatures. All right, so hopefully I didn't confuse you all there. These are just chances. This is not necessarily not intensity. All right, but typically the higher the percentage you get more than likely you are very likely to see either likely below or likely above so we can see for california likely below and over here across indiana the great lakes in the northeast the eastern seaboard and much of the midwest you're likely above for january 17th through the 21st that continues all the way through the 25th of january really going to be a warm period here for a while in fact one of the warmer january's ever um, on record potentially in a monthly average for much of the eastern U.S. So it's been very warm this January for that region with below average temperatures likely um, looking more likely for the four corners for California, Nevada, and the Intermountain West. It looks good for a lot of us uh, back west that don't want the warm temperatures just yet. The cooler it is, the more likely we want it back to being warm again. But hopefully that's not until like late spring or early summer. Six to 10 day precipitation forecast looking wetter than average, likely for California for the Intermountain West and the Pacific Northwest, looking likely wetter than normal for the Great Lakes, for the Midwest and the Deep South. And that continues into the 25th uh, with above average, leaning above average, we should say, for the Eastern US, for the Great Lakes and for the Northern Plains with likely above here for the extreme northeast but look at this for california we are likely going to be drying out it looks like most of the ensembles do indicate we are going to be looking at below average chances of uh, precipitation in the next 8 to 14 days that runs literally from about the 20th from january and beyond looks to be very dry but that's what we need we need to dry out after seeing a lot of this rainfall that has been pretty annoying lately but anyways if you did like today's video please consider supporting the youtube channel by hitting the red subscribe button please consider subscribing it does help out sharing this video with their family and friends on social media and also Please leave a comment in the section below. What did you think about this video? And what weather do you like best? Let me know in the comment section below this video. And I'll be happy to reply to those as soon as I can when I'm available. And not only that, you could also follow me on Facebook, Sacramento Weather Center. The, I'm the admin. That's where I post a lot of my updates for California weather. It's pretty cool. It's pretty awesome. You cannot miss out at all on this we have almost 150 members, and I do appreciate all the support because, yep, that's what I do best. I do this a lot um, because I love doing it, and I love um, giving you guys the latest forecast when I can on my Facebook page, YouTube, and other social medias. All right, but anyways, thank you all for tuning into this video. Share, like, subscribe, and I'll be back with you more soon with more weather content.